We have a doozy on our hands. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We are talking about the snowstorm coming to the north and east. There's been some difficulties in the forecast. We're going to show you the snow map first, my thoughts, and then we're going to break down some model discrepancies here and show you different model runs. So stick around to the end if you're interested in some of the meteorology behind that. Before we get into this snow map, though, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather as you move for the rest of winter, severe weather season, and eventually hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. If you happen to find value in this content, and I hope you do, hit that thumbs up button for me. It's a small ass, but it really does help us out a lot. All right, so first and foremost, this is my snow map. I made this. So we're going to start with this, my thoughts, and then we're going to get into some of what the modeling says. Uh, if you've been following this through the weekend, you know there's been a significant shift to the south. Uh, so the current trend right now is to take the snow away from Boston and to throw it closer to New York City and Philadelphia. So if you're a snow lover in Boston, I think this is becoming a little bit bad news for you. If you like the snow closer to New York City and Philly, I think I have some better news. So here's the deal. I think the main event with this where kind of the cold air meets up with the precipitation is going to be northeast Pennsylvania into extreme northwest New Jersey and then into northwest Connecticut, maybe extreme southwest Massachusetts and then southern New York, northwest of New York City. Uh, city, Poughkeepsie, and Scranton, the Poconos, certainly uh, right on into that area. Uh, where I think the potential for three to six inches could fall. Now, that was six to 12 inches of snow, by the way, in that dark purple color. So we're starting to get a really potential for a sharp snowfall cutoff gradient from about State College and north. We're also going to be watching for the opportunity here. Let me erase some of my lines. Uh, three to six inches of snow here from Cumberland uh, to Harrisburg to the north Philly suburbs, uh, northern half of New Jersey into New York City into Long Island uh, to Boston. Have you in the three to six right now and then into most of Massachusetts and then northwest of Scranton. That's three to six inch mark. Now, I know some of you might be saying, well, that's a little bit lower than what some of the models are showing. Here's the deal with the models. If you're looking at a 10 to 1 snowfall ratio, I think our ratio is maybe a little bit worse than that. That's 10 inches of, uh, 1 inch of rain equals 10 inches of snow. It's going to be really slushy. The temperatures are going to be super marginal in this area, so we may not be getting the best uh, snow ratios out of the deal. And it has been really, really warm as well, so we have to keep that into, in, in mind when you're taking accumulation into account as well that a lot of the initial stuff is going to melt on contact. I will say, though, I guess a positive to kind of counteract that literally what I just said, the heaviest snow is going to fall overnight when the sun isn't up. So that's at least a help there for the areas where we do have that marginal air mass in play around New York City and Philly. Uh, one to three inches from north of D.C., uh, to the southern Philly suburbs and then to the southern half of New Jersey, uh, Laurel Highlands of Pennsylvania, and then back up into uh, right along the New York-Pennsylvania border, way to the northwest of Scranton. This uh, Most of this is going to stay south of Albany and south of Manchester. So those are my thoughts. Here is the high-resolution rapid refresh as of Monday afternoon. This is going to be the 18Z run. Do you see what's happening here? We're getting hosed way up here. Nothing going on. Notice what starts as uh, some scattered rain late Monday night into New York City and Philadelphia. Changes back over. Now, that kind of blast of change of color here where we go back to the blue, this is because it's raining and eventually snowing so heavily in this area that we're kind of making our own cold cold air. We are dynamically cooling the air around it because this, the storm itself should be strengthening as it moves off the coast. And then we have so much upward motion, and as we lift that air, we have cooling going on. So that's what's going to help us out here a little bit. Otherwise, there's not a ton of, certainly not Arctic air. It's just marginal, marginally colder air. Um, the cold stuff is like right up in here, but now the moisture looks like it's being forced further to the south. And as we take that going forward, there's just a little bit of time for some snow in Boston. Again, I want to reiterate here that there is still crazy uncertainty when it comes to who's getting what still at this hour which is pretty uncommon by this point we've got a really good idea of what's happening but it's going to be really interesting to watch uh between boston and new york city who gets the heavier snowfall out of the deal and that is still uncertain right now it looks like it's going to be close to 
New York City. So I wanted to show you again the high resolution rapid refresh. Now, so we're going to show you some of the modeling now. I showed you my forecast, and you see the latest addition to that is really biting onto that extreme southerly euro push that has been happening really since uh, late Sunday night and then through the day on Monday today. Uh, really biting on with that. Now, again, keep in mind if you again if you love snow in New York and Philly, where you see those higher totals. Uh, not really too sure yet if we're going to see that completely European solution pan out. If it does, you're in luck. But again, this is a 10 to 1 ratio, and this is not taking into account pavement temperatures, ground temperatures, things like that. So I, I don't I think 10 inches in New York City, even if we get this ideal track for you guys, is going to uh, lead up and in, lead up into this. Now, this also has a play for our Canadian friends up in Nova Scotia. If it goes in that direction, then it looks like it's going to slide off. And that's something that we were looking at last week whenever we did this. Now, here is the European solution. It's a little bit further north than the solution that I just showed you. So the her is like biting on to this thing, just completely washing out and then going south. Um... There's this changeover by Tuesday morning, and then we still get wallop with some really heavy snow uh, in Nova Scotia. I'll, so, I'll show you some of those numbers from those models in just one second. I think it's important to show you what is going on here in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So we have our storm right here. That's this little divot here. That's our little dip that you see right here, all that red. Here is the steering current. That's going to be the colder air sliding back in uh, from Canada and then into upstate New York and areas like that. What's happening here is, is that in the European, which is why it's further south, it's being forced off the coast that way rather than being lifted up and picked up by that guy here. So that is why the European solution is moved further south and really taken uh, southern Maine, southern New Hampshire in Vermont out of the equation uh, when it comes to heavy snow. If you happen to tune in to forecast over the weekend, not our channel, um, but a lot of other forecasts, again, were having that picture. The last time that we talked about uh, this system was on Friday or, or Thursday when it looked like at least we showed the European solution that it was going to swing kind of out in that direction, to be clear not claiming victory on that because this one is going to flip-flop and this one is going, I was just saying we were showing the European solution um, and that is that still remains to be seen whether that is going to be, uh, whether that is going to come in to fruition. So I want to show you the GFS upper level pattern and I'm going to show you the Euro and GFS model solutions when it comes to this. So there's the steering piece. Here is the system itself and notice the GFS does bring it a little bit further to the north as that guy kind of grabs it a little sooner. That allows the storm itself to be jogged a little bit further north. So the difference is in this, and again, if you're watching in Boston, you're like, what the heck? We were talking about a foot. Now, again, we did not call for that here on this channel. I just want to, I've looked around the what was being said from uh, different TV stations, different media outlets, different, other things there so i i know the i was unavailable to do a forecast this weekend i probably may have said i may have said the same thing so i don't want to be like i'm this all high end you know end all be all to this forecast this is a very very difficult forecast i'm just saying i know the perception this weekend was that there's going to be a foot of snow in boston that's still in the cards but again as we were talking about it looks like the the heavier snow is trending in this direction also though if the euro is correct, notice the differences in snowfall amounts. It's a whole lot of, I mean, there's snow there, but it's certainly not a lot. And the deal with that is because we saw that steering piece up here and we saw the storm itself going that way. The two kind of stay disconnected. They don't really phase and they don't really meet up and they don't really create anything big. Uh, this is the latest GFS, this is the 12Z, and it's kind of on the same track, although it has the heaviest snow just south of Boston. It has only one inch in Boston, um, but didn't want to completely, you know, go exactly with what the model was saying for Boston. That's why I'm still into that three to six inch range, because I do think it has the opportunity to snow heavily for a short period of time in Boston. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But you see that purple, that's like six plus uh, closer to Cape Cod. And that is going to be there as well. You see Halifax uh, into Cape Breton, 
12 to maybe 20 centimeters of snow uh, in this area as well, right along the coast, because we're going to be in that cold air. The colder air is already going to be there by the time that goes through. You don't want the European solution to go out that way, though, because then it takes those higher totals around. So certainly the opportunity for 10 to 20 centimeters of snow um, especially on the southern half of Nova Scotia, Halifax, uh, into Cape Breton, Charlottetown. I think we're a little bit too far north. We might be able to get a little bit. Um, but there you go for my Canadian friends. All righty, guys, post in the comments. I want to know your thoughts. This is a crazy, crazy hard forecast. So, again, go easy on your local meteorologist. Go easy on me. Again, uh, we're going to take. We're gonna watch this closely. Again, this is going to be very interesting to see what plays out. Again, typically the degree of difficulty by this stage of the game has gone down. This one's super, super weird. Um, again, I want to I want to reiterate here that if we keep on losing this far south, we basically lose the storm because it's going to be missing the northern piece and some of the colder air with it, uh, and then it doesn't strengthen as much, and then we don't get it precipitating as heavily along the coast. So you don't want it to go too far south because then everybody kind of misses out on a big snowstorm um you want it to kind of be you want that track to kind of lift up right in here and then someone is probably getting 10 inches to a foot uh right in that area there's still a lot of possibility when it comes to this system but it's going to be fun to watch and uh that's what makes forecasting the weather so fun of course we're focused on the impacts of you guys because it means a lot between a couple inches and a foot of snow um but from a, a purely meteorological forecast standpoint um this is what makes meteorology really fun thank you guys so much for tuning in post who you're watching watching from in the comments we'll catch you next time